Hi everyone, this is Ellie May with Silhouette Secrets Plus and today I wanted to come in and share some tips on the Cameo Pro machine. The Cameo Pro is the 24 inch cutting machine that Silhouette released a couple years ago. Now I was one of the original testers on the Cameo Pro before it was released to the public so I already had hundreds of hours in testing on this machine and over the last couple of years we have troubleshot with thousands of users on the Cameo Pro. Most times we find that it's just something simple that needs to be fixed in what the user is doing or the setup of the Cameo Pro. Most often the setup of the Cameo Pro. Most times we find when we're troubleshooting with users that it's just something that needs to be fixed in the setup of the machine. And the biggest thing is, is if you don't start at the beginning, then you might miss something. And it can be something very, very small. So I'm going to share the top five issues that we see most often when we're troubleshooting with users. Now, I try to keep this as short and concise as possible, but I really want you to be successful with your machine, so sometimes they can get a little bit long as I'm trying to show you a visual with still photos close up on the machine. So I'm going to break this out into five different parts. And in the description below, I will put the link to all five of those videos. It will also be found if you click on the playlist in the YouTube video, directly below the video, I'll have a playlist for the Cameo Pro as well. In addition to that, because there are so many variables to this machine, it really cannot be covered in a very short, concise video for YouTube. So I am going to put together a full extensive class that goes through and is sectioned out depending on how you are using your Cameo Pro. And what I mean by that is that not all users utilize all the same features and not everybody is doing the same thing. So I'm going to have very specific sections that are broken out into specifics like using a 12 inch mat, using a 24 inch mat, loading those, loading different material sizes, how you're using the roll feeder. And I'll go into a little bit more detail than I can do in these short YouTube videos. So that is going to be on my Teachable site for free. You just need to register on the site. So the link is in the description below. I want you to be successful this, with this. And I see users every single day, no matter what machine they have, that are frustrated and they get on and they're posting and asking for help. So I want to give you some of the tools that have helped me in learning how to use my Cameo Pro and how I troubleshoot with users to get them going on their success. Check out the links in the description below for the different sections. I do recommend that you watch every single part so that you don't miss anything that could be the problem with your machine. If these five different tips do not solve your cutting issues, then I would highly recommend that you check out the Teachable where it goes into more detail and that link is in the description below. Make sure to like and subscribe if you would like to be notified of future content when I do post it regarding the Silhouette machines and other projects. And I will say that in most cases that we troubleshoot, experience doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be successful and you will still have some issues. Most users have issues. It doesn't matter. No matter your experience level, you can still experience issues. The biggest thing we see is that sometimes a beginner will be more successful and be cutting faster than an experienced user just because they are willing to go back to the basics and start over and start setting up the machine from scratch. When troubleshooting cut issues, if you go to the very beginning and start down the list of things to look at, most times you can find it very, very quickly. But if you don't start at the beginning, you could be missing the very thing that is causing the issue. And until that is fixed, you're still going to have inconsistent cuts. So while experience is great, 
The Cameo Pro is a completely different beast, especially if you are using another cutting machine that is a larger plotter and this size. The major difference between other large plotting machines and the Cameo Pro is that the Cameo Pro can cut with a cutting mat. And that adds in a level of complexity into that. Now, you'll understand a little bit more why when I start going through the tips. But I just wanted to say that so that even experienced users, you're gonna have issues. Beginners, you're gonna have issues. I started with this machine before it was released and I had issues. I worked through them. I started with the knowledge I had in my troubleshooting and I had to figure out what the problem was. So I wanna share that with you so that you can have success with your Cameo Pro. So let's get started. Okay, so I have five of the biggest things that we see. The first one is your workspace. So I'm gonna give you a little visual here. This is the Cameo Pro 24 inch machine. This is the Cameo 12 inch machine. Now, I'll set it in the middle. It'll probably be hard to see because they're both white. There's quite a big difference. So the 20, 12 inch machine here, you can see that there's quite a difference in the size. In order for this machine to be able to cut 24 inches wide, the machine is wider than that. So the 12 inch machine fits on a desk next to your computer with no problems. Now the biggest thing we see, and one of the number one issues, is not having enough workspace for your Cameo Pro. I have seen some of the most interesting setups where people have their Cameo Pro balanced on two boards. Um, the whole machine's hanging off the table. The roll feeder is hanging off the table. And I'll show you how to set the roll feeder up here in just a second. You need a large workspace that is dedicated for the most part, if you're going to be using this machine, you need a large workspace that is dedicated to your Cameo Pro. The first thing that you need is one that is wider than your machine. So I'll throw links up in the description below to, um, we built this table, so I have a link to how we built the table, but I will also, I also have a post and a tutorial that links several other tables that will work for your Cameo Pro. So check the link out below, but to give you an idea, this table is 36 inches wide. So that is my recommendation. 36 inches wide at a minimum. You do not want the machine hanging off at all. When it's cutting, the machine can kind of wiggle as it's cutting, and so any imbalance in that can cause a cut issue. Now, on the bottom of your Cameo Pro, there are feet, and you want to make sure that those feet are securely on a table. So that is the first part of the workspace. Uh, if you do not have the space for this machine to cut, it's not going to consistently cut well. It's one of the biggest things that we see. Now the other thing is, is for almost all cuts, you need to have the roll feeder installed. And it's called a roll feeder mat support. So it's designed to work with either rolls of vinyl or when you're cutting with a cutting mat. And yes, we see in all of the last couple years of troubleshooting, you need this installed to have consistently good cuts. It provides support for the machine. Again, keep in mind, this is a large machine. It is not like a commercial cutter. It's not designed that way. So if you didn't know, the little um, feet for the roll feeder fit in and nestle into the mat support. So we have roller here, we have the end support, and we have the roller over here. And then you have your feeder uh, support, your stability bar. All of these parts are very important and they are not replaceable. So you need a workspace that can have this roll feeder 
set up completely on the workspace or you are going to cause stress on the parts. When you put, especially when you're working with rolls of vinyl, when you put the weight of a roll of vinyl in here, that puts force onto this roll feeder. So if your roll feeder is hanging off your table, that is excess weight and you are putting stress on these parts. Again, this is not a replaceable part at this time that you can purchase. So you want to keep this in mind. So if I install this, and I'm doing this backwards so it can take a little bit, it's a little bit more interesting. Right there, this one slides, and this one has a little hook there. So if you're installing this for a roll of vinyl, you have your stability bar here. And this may be easier for me. There we go, I have it. Again, I said I'm upside down. So your stability bar is very important in that it holds these pieces in place. It doesn't allow them to wiggle or to move once you have that vinyl in there. Once the machine's weight is on it securely, they don't move. This piece slides back and forth depending on the roll of vinyl you have. And I will go into very more specifics in that teachable class about the roll feeder and how you adjust it. If you are using a cutting mat all the time, even a 12 inch cutting mat, I would recommend that you always have this installed. This little mat support fits underneath It's much easier to install when you're looking at the machine. And then the stability bar, again, goes into the front. It sits right in here, it keeps it stable, and you can slide this one back and forth depending on the size of your mat. You want the mat support in the, as close to the middle of your cutting mat as possible. Now this provides a couple of things. It provides a flat surface for a length outside of your machine. That means that the mat can be pulled in and out at a flat space, flat surface. So it can make it feed much easier. With the mat feeder and the roll feeder installed, you need at least, I'd say 15 inches front to back. And that is if you are using a 12 inch cutting mat or smaller lengths of vinyl. You need at least 15 inches front to back. And if I remember, this was 36 inches. So 36 inches wide by 15 inches at a minimum, okay? That is only if you're using 12 inch cutting mat and small lengths of vinyl. If you are using anything larger than that, you need the material and the cutting mat supported for the full length in front of and behind your machine. So that's why we installed these drop downs. Yeah. Now, you may not have the capabilities to build your own table and that's okay. I've added the links in the description below that give you more options that you can purchase for a very reasonable amount and it is worth it. You paid a lot of money for this machine, you want it to cut properly. So, you need a flat surface that is 22 inches in front and 22 inches behind the machine to fully support your material and your cutting mat. So if we grab a 24 inch cutting mat, here is an example. You need 22 inches because the machine will pull this in and it holds it in the machine for a certain amount of distance while it's cutting. But you need this mat to be completely flat and it goes for the 12 by 24 inch mat as well. This mat needs to be completely flat on the front and on the back side of the machine as it's cutting. If it is not, if it is hanging down, so I'm gonna show you what not to have it look like.
And you can see this mat is a monster. This is a monster mat. It is awesome. I'll throw some links up below on a project I did where I cut four 12 by 12 sheets. It is really cool to be able to do this, but if you do not have it set up properly, it's not gonna cut and feed properly for you. So this is the thing we see the most often with users, is they have their mat loaded in their machine and it is hanging down in front. Like I said, this mat is a monster. It is heavy compared to a 12 by 12 cutting mat. The machine cannot work against gravity. It cannot work against the weight of the mat and whatever material you have on that mat to pull it into the machine evenly all the way around as it cuts. Now it may work once, may work twice, but you will have cutting issues if you continue to cut like this. So you need a full support on both sides of your machine. Now this is for your success. So that is one of the biggest things that we see is somebody trying to use this machine without the proper workspace. Now, I've built, with my husband, we built this table to house my Cameo Pro. This was when it was, before it was even released, we were working on this because I was a tester for it and I needed a space for it. Um, I will also throw up the link to my unboxing video in the description below. When I unboxed the machine, the workspace that I had been working on with this machine did not work. It was not long enough to support my materials. And I learned that through testing. When I was beta testing the software, when I was doing long cuts, I sent a cut that was 90 inches long. I don't know why. I didn't need to cut that long, but it, I was testing it. It didn't work. It didn't feed properly. There were a couple issues there that were both software and the machine related, but it taught me that you need it fully supported. If your material is hanging down in the front or even behind the machine, it can cause feed issues. So that is the first one that I hope that you are able to get a workspace that is dedicated to give you success with the Cameo Pro. If you do not currently have a, a flat workspace that is this long and you're having issues, I would recommend you set it on the floor and do your testing on the floor. It's not a permanent solution, but it will get you through your cuts to help you to troubleshoot. However, I would suggest you watch the rest of the video first because if it's something else that's the issue, it won't solve the problem. So I'm gonna fold this table down And in my um, description, in the link for the other table options, there are a couple that have a drop down sides on it. I do like this. We built this table. It's on wheels. As you can see, it's easy to move. Um, this is not the room that I store this machine in. This machine is actually out in my studio area where I have my computer. Um, I do use this machine on Bluetooth. Um, We'll talk about some of that here in a little bit. 